Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good whatever the time of the day it is for you. Today we are going to be changing the oil on this uh, 2016 Dodge Charger Hellcat. It is my Hellcat. Um, we are going to be using the Mopar SRT oil filter. Um, we are also going to be using most likely this Mobile One Euro formula. Um, this was always the Mopar SRT brand. Um, it's the exact same specs as the SRT Pennzoil. So pretty much the same exact thing. It is completely safe for your engine. Uh, I did order the SRT Pennzoil and it is uh, delayed by Amazon. So we are going to be waiting for that. I might get it before, um, before this uh, gets uploaded because um, I just got a notification that the delay is no longer delayed. So it's gonna arrive today. Uh, so I might wait and use the Pennzoil SRT one and use this as like a backup in the future. Uh, or I might just do it with the mobile one. Um, some people actually prefer the mobile one, say so it's better. Um, but I mean, premise of this video is how to change the oil. So we're gonna get to it. All right. So first thing to address with the oil, um, on these Hellcats. Uh, 2015 and 2016 Hellcats do have a different dipstick than your newer Hellcats. Um, so it does read, and what most people have done, is uh, six quarts of oil in these cars, uh, whereas 2017 and newer Hellcats uh, have seven quarts. But just so everybody knows, and it is um, known, all Hellcat engines are the same size uh, oil capacity, the dipstick length is what changed. So you guys can actually get a 2017 a newer dipstick and it will uh, work just fine uh, in your 2015 and 16. Uh, and I recommend going for seven quarts, even in your uh, older versions of the Hellcat, uh, just because that's what the newer ones are updated to and a little bit more oil can never hurt. So like I said, uh, we are gonna be using Mobile One Zero W40 European car formula. Um, before I got this, we did check all of the specs and the same exact viscosity and the same little, uh, API service. Uh, so it is the exact same, um, not the exact same, very close to the same. So it should work just fine for uh, these Hellcats. It's been documented. It has been done with this and the cars run just fine. So what you're gonna want is your jacks. Uh, if you have two jacks, cool. If you only have one, that's just fine. If you have jack stands, um, but we are going to get uh, one or two jacks and we're gonna bring them up to the front of the vehicle. And what you're gonna look for as a jacking point, is going to be, if you can see, you're gonna look for a frame rail, which runs all along the vehicle here and pick a good spot uh, where there's a, um, close enough to the front of the vehicle. We're gonna jack it up there and we're gonna go on the other side and do the same. Uh, there is these, if you can see it there, that uh, piece hanging down right there. That is a uh, great jack spot, but it is for the rear of the vehicle. So um, we're gonna be focused on the front and the frame is a great point to jack up at. Uh, so we will do that. And then uh, once the vehicle is secure in place uh, and lifted up high enough, we're gonna put the, uh, or we're gonna get underneath and we'll go to the next step. All right, so once the vehicle is up in the air, and I recommend putting some jack stands with those jacks as well. You can see there's plenty of clearance down there though. So I will show you the next step. Also, as a side note, if you have a, uh, an oil catch can, feel free to empty that now. Uh, before we get too far into this and get that dirty oil out of there. Just a good practice during oil changes. All right, we are underneath the vehicle here and you're gonna see while you're down here, we have one, two, three, and four bolts that we are gonna take off to remove this uh, plate here. 
Uh, so we're gonna take those off. I believe they are 10 millimeter or 13 millimeter. So I will let you know in just a second. So I'm down here now and it does look like it is a 10. So we are going to remove all of these bolts here. And again, remember it is the one I'm doing here, that one and the two in the rear. Okay, focuses, I apologize. Those two there. Also, while I'm down here, I just wanted to point out, um, you can see these have a number. Now, I don't think those that's very important for like undoing uh, the bolts. Um, however, when you put it back in, it doesn't hurt to go back in that order. But as you can see, I did take these out. So I'm gonna pull this uh, shield out. You just slide back and it falls right down. And now you have access to your oil filter and your oil pan. So we're gonna get working on that next. So before we get going, a good practice is usually to check the level uh, and the color of your current engine oil. So what I'm gonna do is actually take the dipstick out and I brought some paper towels with me. Uh, and we're gonna take a look at the current oil. Um, now granted, this car makes about a thousand horsepower um, and we are getting close to the end of the oil cycle for this. So it's probably gonna be a little dirty, um, not a surprise, but we mainly wanna see if this uh, is burning any oil. So I'm gonna look at that. Okay, so we did just take this out and it looks like we are full for oil. So that is a good thing. So now we just put the dipstick back in and we are going to take the cap off of the oil reservoir so that there is a uh, not a vacuum when I go to take the oil plug off. All right, so now what you're gonna do, you're gonna put the, uh, if you have, well, you absolutely are gonna need a uh, pan to catch all of the dirty oil that comes out, uh, or you're gonna make a mess absolutely everywhere, and it's gonna be a pain to try to clean up your driveway, your shop, wherever you decide to do this at. So make sure you have one of these to catch the oil. Uh, we're gonna place that underneath the bolt as best as you can and predict for it to shoot out a little bit. Um, yeah. Okay, so as far as the actual bolt of the oil pan goes, it is a 13. So we are going to put a 13 on it, make sure that our pan is lined up properly. If you have safety glasses and gloves, I recommend you put them on. I'm gonna try to break this loose. It was giving me issues, so. Might need both hands, uh, so just give me one second. All right, so, uh, I got it, <laughs> finally. Um, I had to actually use a uh, wrench to get on the handle to undo it. Whoever tightened this last uh, really tightened her down pretty hard. So uh, we're gonna just remove this uh, this plug finally. Um, bear with me, I'm gonna try not to get oil everywhere. So uh, give me just a second. Do it with this hand so it doesn't shoot out. And make sure this is straight. If it does start to shoot out in an unexpected way, just be sure to move the pan quickly. And goes oh just got it look at that yeah that is a uh, holy crap that is black that's not good i think it was time all right so while we're letting that uh run out now keep in mind that oil has been in the car for a long time it sat over the winter uh take a cloth of some sort and you're gonna to wanna to get some carb cleaner uh, and you're gonna spray it on this cloth here. Um, I can't do that with one hand, so I will do that off camera. All right, so it's pretty much done. Um, I did spray carb cleaner on the rag here. What you want to do is uh, kind of clean up around here. I know it's still gonna be dripping a bit, so it's not perfect, but you wanna Try to clean this surface as good as possible. Um, so when it is done kind of dripping or close to done dripping, you'll put the plug back in. Another good important thing to do before 
uh, you're done is you want to check this drain plug and make sure the o-ring is still seated well you can see here it looks looks pretty good um, there's no cracks or anything I'm gonna hit this with carb cleaner actually and clean it all off to get a better look um, so we can kind of see for sure how it's looking but first glance it looks okay okay so I just cleaned it off um, it does look like it's good um, I do see a little bit of a gap there but I don't think it's gonna affect anything I do think that's a sign of over tightening so in the next couple oil changes we might want to look at getting a new ring to go in there or just a whole new drain plug altogether um, but nothing too alarming we'll of course inspect to make sure that this is not leaking and everything is good uh, after the oil change. So what you wanna do next is that you're gonna want to remove your oil filter, which is right next to the oil pan. Um, now, if this is anything like the bolt was, it might be over tightened. So we'll see, they shouldn't be on too tight and it is on a little bit tight so i am gonna grab a special tool that i just bought from actually from walmart we'll grab this here and this is a uh oil uh filter wrench or something like that uh that we're gonna use to pull it off so we're just gonna grab a standard socket There you go, and we're gonna pop her right in there, like so. And this will just go right onto here. And you can see it matches up just right. These uh, Hellcat oil filters are about 93 millimeters. So if you're buying one of these, look for a 93 millimeter and it should pop right on. There it is, nice and nice and snug to the form. And we're just gonna turn the wrench. There it goes, nice and easy. Boom. And we're gonna do the same thing that we did for the oil bolt. And we're gonna make sure this is nice underneath. And we are gonna just take this off. There is gonna be oil, so get ready to get your hand out of the way. I believe we did use a Yep, here it comes, okay. Yep. Nice. Yeah, it's gonna drip out of there. We're gonna just pull it off. Let's just get it off of there. And I was wearing gloves and now I'm not and I regret it, so here we go. All right, and dump the rest of that out into there. I am gonna be getting rid of this filter we want to make sure that the oil filter uh, o-ring did not stick up on there and it did not it is on here so we're good i'm going to just put it in here because we don't need that anymore uh, and i'm going to clean my hand off and get back to it so my hands are all clean um if you did notice the oil filter was black that was in there we're going to be using this one uh, what we had was the standard mopar oil filter before now we're going to be using the srt oil filter if you want to know how it's an SRT filter, well, it, uh, oh, shoot, don't drop it. It says SRT on it. Um, the Hellcats actually come with the Mopar oil filter, uh, but recommend the SRT filter. So make that make sense. Nice little thing with these filters as well is it kind of gives you a, a diagram on how you're supposed to put them on. Uh, so it says to clean the uh, car where it's about to be inserted, dump a little bit of oil, into um, the filter itself, screw it on, screw it on, and then uh, fill oil afterward and check the dipstick. Um, kind of cool. So just like the uh, drain plug, the oil filter area, I'm also going to hit with the carb cleaner on this rag to make sure it's all clean and smooth, just like the instructions on the oil filter said. Um, we are just about all uh, drained completely um so yeah carb cleaner on a rag we're gonna clean that all up till it's shiny same thing with the oil uh 
drain plug area as well. Uh, so both of those will be nice and shiny. And then we're gonna put the new filter on and replace the oil uh, drain plug. Well, you see we are pretty shiny and clean up there uh, where the filter is gonna go. Here is said filter. We are actually, before we get started, gonna pour a little bit of motor oil into the filter, um, just a tad bit, and get it kind of around this ring right here. Um, so just a little bit, if you have a quart, just maybe a splash in there and then get it around the filter uh, O-ring and then we'll screw it on. Okay, here we are. And like I said, just a little bit in there. And then I'll just get a little bit on my glove here and put it around the O-ring. Make sure that it is not just straight. There we go. Okay, now before you put this on, just keep in mind you do have oil inside. We're gonna just push it onto there and it's gonna screw right on. I'm gonna stop filming so that uh, I have both hands because I don't want to drop this. All right, so it is on and I did just go as tight as I could with my hand. I will do the extra measure just to go an extra little bit of a turn with this wrench since I went and bought it. So I might as well get a little more use out of it. Get it snug. Oops, come on. And a little turn. All right. Cool. That should be plenty tight. Um, for the oil filter now just to put this bolt back on Here we go All right, so we just have that on there finger tight now uh, we're gonna just uh, Go to about 20 foot pounds uh, on the plug. Let me go back to tighten Try not to There we go. Okay, so we're gonna tighten down 20 foot pounds, and we're trying not to get it as tight as last time, uh, but we still want it tight. Okay, that is not going anywhere. So, um, again, make sure that you thread it with your fingers, and then uh, 20 foot pounds, or just, I mean, tight with a hand tool. Okay, and just like we said too, now is a great time to take off our oil catch can uh, and empty out that bad oil that has been caught from going uh, as blow by so we'll take this off i have not done this since probably my last oil change so this is probably pretty full and probably pretty nasty this is kind of a satisfying thing because this is all the oil that didn't go into your supercharger threads and I mean you can see there's a decent amount in there and all that is just saved by having one of these catch cans on so cannot complain okay and the oil catch can is back on so now lastly right gonna put the oil in the car it's the easy part so I, like I said, have opted to do seven quarts in my uh, 16. So we have five quarts in that big one, and then we have one and two small ones. I will start with the one that I have already uh, opened up to put in the oil filter. Go ahead and grab yourself a little uh, funnel. You can get one at O'Reilly's for like 99 cents or whatever, and put it right here. And you're gonna hold it with one hand, dump it in with the other. Um, so for that, I will, uh, have to stop recording for just a second and then i'll be back in a second the oil is in the car we are good to go oil change is complete i also did check to uh, make sure that it's not dripping beneath and it is not so that is a good thing so the very last thing that you have to do for uh to complete this oil change uh is you do want to run the car for about 45 seconds uh, that will make the uh oil level go down let this thing start up and we're just going to let it idle for about 45 seconds uh, like
like I was saying there. And while you're in here, if you'd like to, you can go down to vehicle info and go over to your, oops, let's get that right. Go over to your oil life and you just have to press okay to reset that. So we hold it to restore it. Oh, to restart, to reset oil life engine must be off. Okay, well, we're gonna let this run for just a few minutes and idle. Okay, so we let the car run for about a minute. Uh, I'm gonna put the car back into run and then I will show you guys, uh, you already probably know, but we're gonna go down. Oops, we're gonna go to our oil life. Change oil soon, I am aware. Yes, lots of alerts. We are on oil life. No, we're not. Jeez. Oil life. And we're going to hold OK. And we are back to 100. Now you can just kill that. And you're pretty much done. All right, guys, so that is it. Uh, we've changed the oil on the car. Uh, the last thing you do want to do is check the dipstick at the very end of this. Uh, make sure that your level is correct. Again, if you have a 15 or 16 and have not uh, made the dipstick conversion, uh, you're going to want to, or it's going to show that you're way overflowed. Um, but seven quarts is, in my opinion, the right amount to run. Um, if you have a 17 plus, seven quarts, it's going to show great on there. If it doesn't show enough, um, check underneath the car <laughs> and you might have another oil change on your hands. But that's it, guys. Uh, so if you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, just put it in the comments section and I'd be happy to answer. Have a good one.